probably put it in the FAQ, okay? Uh, it's as simple as you type into the search by Windows people here, number of Windows people, uh, Windows operating system. You could type in the search box sound recorder and hit enter. It brings up a little box that's a sound recorder. You hook up a microphone to your computer, you click record, you start talking, it records, you hit stop, it saves it wherever you choose to save it on the computer. As simple as that. Um, Google Chrome, if you guys use that as a browser, that has a facility you could download an extension to the browser where it's just a recorder. You have your a microphone hooked up. There's there's a ton of, of easy recording systems out or there. Or your phone, Kelly. Oh, it's your, your, phone. Absolutely, your phone. Your phone, you can use that. Um, yep, that's perfect. Um, you'll have to be logged on Life Maps through your phone, but you can do that. The phone's not the greatest experience right now. It'll be a lot. It's just a web experience, which isn't great on a little phone. Well, you could but, download onto your computer. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. Then move it to yeah absolutely. Yeah. Use it. every phone. Uh, recording apps for phones are, are cost you nothing. You just download it in three seconds, you're recording, you record, and then you plug it into your computer and pull off that memory if you want to do it that what, way. What do you download? Uh, well, if you go to, it depends what type of phone, I could walk you through it sometime if you want. Okay. It might be boring to these guys right now, but it's very easy to do. It's not a problem. What are, do we want to, do we want to break or do we want to keep going? I know you guys might be getting getting bored or do you, does anybody want to just, just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. we'll just we'll just make it we'll just make it uh, actually pretty quick here uh, so we will power through um, this was a I want to do one other memory for me and it's actually my sister that posted it um, this was an entry for me uh, if you entire memory there wasn't much this was Lewis Milch violin maker 517 Wabasha and Matilda Milch music teacher uh, same address, 517 Wabash on my sister, one of my sisters, Rose Larson, made this entry uh, to my surprise. And uh, let's do view entire memory so we see the text of the photos. And here's just a, a, a fantastic image of early St. Paul, 517 Wabash, when the streets were basically dirt and horses were walking the territory. Um, if we look at the image, she did a little bit of a close up. And on this sign here, it says Lewis Milch Violin Maker. And there's the family hanging out the windows. <laughs> and the, the little girl right here is my grandma. Oh, oh, so nice. my mom's side. Oh, I did a whole what thing year? on Facebook. Uh, this was 1890. This image is from 1890. You see the gas lamps on the, yeah. the street back then? Yeah. Pictures are easy to post. Pictures are extremely easy to post. Yep, yep. Once you once you've done this like once or twice, guys, it is like super easy. After that, you'll you'll you'll, you'll have it done in no time. That building's gone. Oh yeah, long run. How do we get everything off of Old St. Paul on the life map? Uh, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, and, and I've actually grabbed a few. Some people put up some fantastic images and stuff. I probably grabbed like five or six. I don't have a lot of time on that. Hopefully, people will do their stuff. Um, you can go to, to uh, Old St. Paul. You can do a search for a particular location if it's one that that is important to you or you love the photo. Uh, you click on the photo on the Old St. Paul. Page, you click on photo, goes to that larger photo, kind of a gray screen around it. And then if you right click it, say save as, you save it to your computer in a place that you know, a folder, whatever, just call it a life map fo folder or something. And then you then it's in your computer and you just go to that address and post up the image. And it's it's as simple as that. Um, let's, so yeah, that was a very, uh, very cool, um, yeah. Uh, great grandpa was a, a violin maker. He did concerts and stuff. She posted up some things from some of the concert halls that he he did uh, uh, recitals in, in the city. So a very uh, interesting one for me. Um, Dixie Cream Donuts. Does anybody besides yes. me remember Dixie yes. Cream? Yes. Couple, Dixie couple, cream. I love them. Couple Dixie Cream. I love the just the glazed donuts. Where like was it? Paul? Um, it was on University, uh, University Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. Oh. And actually, I got that. Well, okay. Oh, mellow, so, mellow cream. Mellow cream. Sure, that was another one. And I don't know why I'm talking, but I should just type it in. Uh, but they were um, my uh, grandparents lived on Thomas on my dad's side, and we used to go there on Sundays and have my my grandma's burgers. Uh, so Dixie Cream Donuts. Um, this is a, this is a, a story of kind of how crazy I get on stuff. Um, so Dixie Cream Donuts uh, at 918 University Avenue West. Uh, Benjamin A. Amundsen, President, Julia Amundsen, Secretary Treasurer, Bakers and Whole, uh, we have an entire memory now, but no, just a little bit more. <coughs> Bakers and Wholesale and Retail, right? So Dixie Cream Donuts. So remember it as a kid, um, I, I guess I like detective work. I like connecting the dots, right? 
So this is my story on Dixie Game Donuts. So I was like, I got to figure out what's going on here. So nobody, everybody in Old St. Paul kind of mentioned it. Somebody's like, I think it was University Avenue or this or that, but nobody really had anything locked in really. Um, so Pat maybe knows exactly. She's got a mind like a steel trap. But people on the site really never had much, right? So I'm like, I remember that. I got to find Dixie Cream. So uh, I started doing some research online, and I, and I had the names from the city directory, the Amundsons, right? So I started digging um, Benjamin Amos, Amundsen, and I found this weird reference from an old, uh, I think it was like a whitepages.com or something like that. And sometimes those are valuable because it said Benjamin Amundsen said 104 years old at some place up in, uh, uh, it was up in, uh, off Silver Lake Road up in New Brighton. And, um, and I was like, wow, 104, wow. I hope he's still around. And, and so, uh, and then I looked and, and they had a connection. They kind of, for some reason, they find those connections like we'll have a life map. There was one that said Julia Amos. He may be connected to Julia Amos. It's something like I'm on the right path here, right? And they had her as like 94 years old. And I'm like, wow, are these people still alive? And they showed a, a place on the map. But then I had to go somewhere else where they were showing that place on the map because it wouldn't give you the information. And then that one said, "Hey, you want 1095? We'll tell you all about these guys, right? You know the, you know the thing." So, kept digging, kept digging, and finally I found the address that this pin on the map was pointing to, right? Uh, 223 Willow Lane. Um, so I go up in uh, New Brighton, find Willow Lane, go knock on the door. But this is like three in the afternoon. I'm gonna find this stupid Dixie cream that kills me. Knocking on the door. Uh, s sitting there, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, just I gotta solve this, and nobody answers, right? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, are they dead? Are they in there? And they're like, no, no I hope not. So, nothing. I go to the next door. It, it, was, it was actually like a townhouse thing, but it was like old townhouses, like from the 60s. You know, they had the little ball glass kind of light out front, very low slung with the kind of these divider things between them, these wall yeah, dividers. Yeah, yeah. You guys kind of remember this. And uh, it was like, okay, so I go next door, knock on the door, nothing. And I go to the other side, there's four of them in the unit, and I knock on that door, nothing. And I'm like, this is just stupid, it's probably the wrong person anyways. Okay, I got one more left, might as well knock on the door. Go knock on the door. I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, nothing happened. Oh, this is it, I'm done, I'm giving it, I can't spend the time on this. The skirt kind of appears on the bottom of this window on the side of the thing, on the glare, I can just see the skirt kind of shows up there, and it's like, well, I think there's somebody there. And then, and then the door kind of slowly opens, and this woman uh, uh, opens the door, and very tentative. Who comes to doors anymore, right? Yes. Nobody, no strangers come to your door anymore unless they're Jehovah Witnesses or something like that. <laughs> so, or, or pizza sales or census or whatever, tax collectors. So uh, obviously very wondering what's going on here. So I kind of explained the situation. I said, this is not gonna make any sense to you at all, but I'm looking for a Julie or Ben Amundsen and this, you can see the spark in her eye, you know, there was something there and she's, she's like looking around. Well, come on inside, come on inside. Uh, and, and I'm like, well, this is interesting. So I go, and she, she's, she says, you'll probably have a gun and shoot me or something, but I kind of wanted to talk about this stuff. And I said, I don't have a gun, I promise you. I'm only interested in history. And she sat me down. On her table in the kitchen was all her genealogy stuff, which is like nuts. You know, just like, w this is really weird. She wasn't a family member. She lived, Julia Amundsen, uh, she never knew Ben. Ben had died, so this 104 I think these websites just keep adding, right, to the oh. age. I didn't know that. You guys obviously knew that. He's like, they'll be 200 years old eventually. <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy. So um, she said, listen, uh, yeah, they lived at 223, and uh, the family grew up. And this is something that I don't even know if I should tell you, you know. And, and she was having a bit of, a uh, little bit of uh, memory recalls. Very uh, older woman, probably 80, 85, maybe even older than that. And her nephew wanted her to gather all the genealogical stuff, so that's what she was doing. Um, I probably shouldn't tell you about this, but um, the daughter of Julia, I never knew Ben, the daughter of Julia, um, she was a drug addict, and uh, we only saw her like a couple times. She was always, she was never there. She had a kid out of wedlock, Beth. Uh, so the grandparent, Julia, raised Beth kind of as a daughter while the real daughter was gone to where we re rehab, whatever she was in her life, she was out of the picture. And she was, this woman was concerned uh, that, you know, people always talk about this kind of out of wedlock thing back in the old days was a sensitive subject. So she was even tentative about talking about it. But then she said, uh, 
kind of came forth a little bit. And Beth is this granddaughter. She uh, she lived with them until they got out of school, and she had kids very early on, and those kids uh, are now in high school. And she said, uh, she, I know she moved somewhere. I said, Do you know an address or I don't have any idea. She didn't know where she, where she went, but she said. I'm pretty sure she was kind of in the area because her kids were in high school. She wanted to keep them through the end of high school. So I go online again, start digging and searching, and I found some entrance for a Beth off of Old Highway 8, and it said, um, work at Viking Metals, right? So I'm like, well, I don't know anything about Viking Metals. There was no contact. They never gave any contact information or anything. There's no way of getting a hold of her. So I was like, Viking Metals. And I'm like, let's go to LinkedIn, which actually has real names of people and real professions. I go to LinkedIn, put Beth Amundsen for the vicinity, and up comes Beth Amundsen works at Viking Metals. I'm like, this is fantastic. So I call Viking Metals. Uh, she, they put me on hold. She's busy right now. Half an hour I'm sitting on hold, and, and she's still on the phone. And I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't meant to be. Hang up for about an hour, call back. They put me through to Beth. I said, Beth, this is going to be really weird, but, but I'm this guy who's interested in Dixie Cream Donuts. And she, what? She goes, <laughs> she goes like crazy. She's super excited. She's like, oh man, I would love to share this. I've got photos of the building. I've got photos oh, of the, the oh, grandparents behind the oh, counter serving oh, customers. Like oh, all kinds of history. I used to run around there as a little kid eating the donuts and stuff like that. Oh, and just so much great information. So um, I made a, not made a deal with her. She's like, I want to give you some. I want to give you as much of the stuff as you want. She's gonna very soon scan some of the photos and a couple of them send them to me so I can put them on the on the map and then she'll come in later once the once the site is live and we'll have everything about Dixie Green we ever needed to know. Oh, All right, cool. cool. So that's, that's the detective work that kind of goes on with some of this stuff. I get too crazed and it distracts me, so I gotta kinda of watch what I what I do. Um, okay, so uh, I don't think I have uh, we're just gonna skip that thing. I think we have, uh, that's about it uh, for the presentation. We're going to go to, if there is any questions, like short questions or something. I know it's really I would show dark them how the, where the edit is. I think that was one thing that kind of scared me at first. Okay. Um, so let's go to, uh, let's see. But when you're not yeah, it's, uh, let's see, it's not. You can only edit your own entries. Right. You can't do anybody else's. Um, you can add a new memory. Yeah, you can't edit, edit the same address. Um, there we got one. Okay, so new memory. Um, guys, I've been putting a lot of photos in about street corners too. I always say street corner. So here's Rice and Larpenter. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, we want to go to that. Um, so, if you're just kind of interested in seeing scenes from the city, I have a lot of these photos that were taken by a guy of street corners. So, you can just search street corner. There will be just a ton of them in there. You guys can look all around town. You know, kind of, kind of fun. Um, so, view entire memory. So, I made as life map one of the life map names. I made this entry. So, it doesn't matter. It would be my name typically, right? So. Your name, whoever you are, you entered a memory, it's sitting right here, and you can see there's 75,000 entries under life map. Kind of how crazy it went. Um, yep, so these are the options. Right now we can see I added a photo here. So that's indicated by a green photo. Can't do anything with it, just, just shows people that you've added a photo. If you added a video, this little video emblem would be over here. If you added audio, this audio would be right here. So then people can look at it and quickly see, oh, I can look at video or audio or whatever. Can you can listen to it, and that will be over here. You'll be able to click on the box and start it up. So, um, so example, uh, I want to add a photo. So I click here, and now I choose a file. So I can choose a file to add a photo. Um, i got to remember this. Okay, Rice and Larkin are off to come back here and edit this one. We'll do it just, just for you guys. So I click choose a file. It goes to my computer. Just like any other type of thing, you, you uh, have information. I'm going to click, this is some weird stuff here. I'm going to click save. That's all I did was select the photo and click save. The photo is now saved there. So if I click view entire memory, Here's your photo. Uh, let me jump a little bit here. There's a street corner of Rice and Larpenter. There's a standard oil that used to be at the corner. There's the guy that ran the station. And there's that photo I just posted right there, right? Simple as that. Uh, edit, 
I want to delete that photo. You're going to delete that photo? Sure. Okay, photo gone. No more photo. Right? Got rid of it. So, uh, let's go back to the top. Shows how easy it is to add a photo. Um, the other option on add a photo, URL. So anywhere I go that I see an interesting photo, I can right click, I can grab the URL address, uh, and then I paste that in here, and then I click save, boom, saves it to that location. My work the photos deserve to be at the locations they actually should be. So. My work with a lot of those aerial photographs they have online, so there's not long enough memory on that particular site, because some of those are really big files. Yeah, well, again, we, we shrink the photo down a bit. Okay. So okay. because we have to, we can't afford to, to have it crazy. So uh, we just click hide to get rid of that thing. If we want to save a video, we go to YouTube. Um, it's extremely, again, all these things are, and again, if I'm starting to bore you on this stuff, just YouTube. So we go to YouTube. So you have a you have an eight millimeter film that you've now converted to to uh, Betamax, and then you bring it to a place that converts Betamax into a digital file or something, right? So we have a digital file. So we go to YouTube and we just it's I should probably list the process for saving to YouTube, but it, it, that's very easy too. So I go to YouTube, for example, and uh, uh, Nat King Cole. So I have the best of Nat King Cole. So this is this was a. We're just going to use that as an example that you saved your video on YouTube and you know where the location is because you saved it there. Okay. All I do is go up here, I click and highlight the YouTube address, I click copy, right? Yeah. Okay. Close that. Go back to my life map. Wow. We'll play was on this one. No, I wasn't. Where was I at? Over here. Okay. There's the YouTube box. When I clicked on the thing, I go paste, I go save. So now I click, now I see over here, there's my video that I saved. I click on view entire memory, and I'll see the photos first. <coughs> Actually, I don't see the photos first. Show video is right there. Click show video. And there's the video that I just saved. So I can watch my video, or my family, or I have some historic videos. There was, I actually grabbed one off of YouTube. Um, that I found, and there's probably a bunch of them there. Uh, let's see, I'm going to Porky's. Do you have a channel on YouTube? I, I just have a couple of videos on there, so I, I uh, yeah, I think I used to have them. I haven't done the, the whole YouTube thing so much. Um, Porky's Drive and View Entire Memory, see, we see there's a video there. So we just click on that memory, we show the video, and here's one that somebody posted, uh, I think it was like back in about 2000. Four, something like that. I uh, remember his port, remember Porky's driving. Um, videos are a little tricky around here because with Wi-Fi at your home, all the stuff's going to be a lot faster. I guess I'm not going to bore you with that. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the videos will come up and people can play them. And it says just click it to get rid of it. Okay, and you're done there. Uh, and now I went off the I went off the page. So. Back to that location where I was. Yeah. Go back one more time. Try it. I think. No. i try it. I got there through a weird way by searching Porky's. So I think. So I'm just finding locations that myself as life map entered, okay? So your your stuff is all gonna be on your personal page. Once you make some entries, you click the personal page, there'll be all your memory entries there. You can edit any of those entries. Uh, extremely easy to do any of that. Um, did we go, okay, we, okay. So let's find my entry here, where I made an entry. These were all made by other people. I must have made one here at Brown. Boy, there's a jillion entries at this location. Oh, this is, you no, know, guys, that's like every location. Uh, actually, I, could, um, I, I don't know who, which, which person entered that. Started. I wanna, okay, here, here's my map right here. Okay, sorry, go to, this will do it. So this is just like one of my entries that I would have made under my name or whatever. 
I just want to get back to the uh, to the finish of that. What happened? Oh, it's still loading. I was, yeah, I was a little worried about the uh, speed of their internet connection here is slowing down. Well, that's real good till. Uh, well, that thing's loading a bit. Any other questions people have? Anything? Or we got? Yep, yep, Pat. After your live, <clears throat> everybody. How are you going to uh, publicize it? Are we each going to, as we, I belong to some pages like for Sacred Heart St. John's School. Right. So. Where I went, actually. Yep. yep. So I can go there and say, hey guys, I want to put your pictures on life map of whatever. Yeah. And get volunteers to protect that kind of thing. Yeah. Is that the, well, you're exactly right. I think and that's that's my hope for the old St. Paul is for people. Uh, once we go live, I'll be letting everyone and everyone who isn't old St. Paul, or maybe you're, whether you are or not, or let people know that the the front page of the site right now. So if we log out, uh, you saw that video. You kind of have scenes of St. Paul going past. Um, anyone here can enter their email here. So just tell your friends now if you want to. Um, they can enter their email there and click send. It'll go into the file. Or then on uh, the first week in June when we go live, I'll, everybody will get an email <coughs> saying, hey, Life Maps, uh, open and ready for your memories. Well, but I'm thinking about wider, much, much. Yes. Like, okay. There's St. Paul, there's 15, I mean, East, East Side, yeah. East Side, whatever. Uh, so there's about eight of them. Yeah. So that could be. Right. Just, yep. So I'm, each of us should. Yeah, and she's talking, in case you guys can't hear, she's just talking about how, how you can spread the word about it. Um, and there's a ton of ways, uh, yes, associations, school associations, workplaces, reaching out to people. Um, through the, the old memory groups, there's Minneapolis ones, whatever. I mean, I'm focused on St. Paul, um, but St. Paul, there's the churches, the schools, any of those ways. Uh, West 7th has a page. West 7th Association, yeah, the, the, the East Side has a page. Uh, East Side has 10 pages. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm worried about opening up to East Side, and I'm an East Sider, but, uh, but I think uh, this is all about memories and, and whatever we get, we get. Right. Um, but I think it's gonna be real cool. So, um, yes, after June first, once I let everybody know, and I'll say something at Old St. Paul too, then it would be mean the world to me for you guys then to just get your email list at home on your computer and just send a, a, a promo uh, life map, get grab our link and send that to everybody you know and say this is something you guys need to check out and let's be a part of, of building the thing. Um, yes, Jean. You can not just do your own home and through the ages, but I went out and did like aunts and uncles that are dead or grandparents. Start filling, the, you probably have pictures in at your house to, that you can yeah. get out there. Yeah, she's saying about filling in uh, uh, past, past uh, people that are no longer with us. Uh, this is another thing that probably had a, a, a part of the inspiration for this. I went to an estate sale probably 10, 10 or more years ago in St. Paul, and there was this pile of family photos back from the 1800s. Oh. And I said, what are you guys doing with that? We're throwing them out if you want them. Mm. You know, it's like, I don't know any of these people. There's nothing written on them. Write on your photos if you got them. Oh. It's a good idea, or get them on Life Map. But uh, I just, uh, heartbreaking, you know, this is all this history just disappeared. And I just, that's the impetus of this, is, is saving all this stuff. So, um, very quickly here, uh, save audio, we just click here, uh, we grab an audio file somewhere on the computer, we'll have a little folder that we put our audio file in, we just click on it, it throws it in just like a photo or anything else, it saves it, and then the people can just click on the play button, and they'll hear uh, your ancestors' voices, whatever you have recordings of, people will just listen to that. Um, if I want to edit, here's my photo, or here's my thing, let's say I put in photos and whatever, I just click edit, and it goes to the edit the memory, I had entered Central High School as the location, and now I can just type in any additional information, I could change to visited there instead of history, I can change the date, the only thing I can't change is the location, because that's where my memory's at. So I uh, put in whatever changes, whatever additions I want to do, right, you could put a bookmark kind of at an address so you remember it, Come back and just add and add and add whatever you wish to do. What if you got the address wrong? If you got the yes, okay. You want to fix that. Yep, that's a that's an excellent point. So the question was, what if you got the address wrong and you want to fix it? Um, let's see, log in. Of course, now we have to find another. Um, the, that's
that's kind of getting in. That's going to lead into something. Actually, it's a great question. It's something we just put into life map. Um, uh, I told you about. I told you about Don Emson. All these things, all these memories of, of very early St. Paul are crammed in this one place because Google Maps couldn't get the North South Smith right. I probably got about a six-hour job ahead of me to move all those things. But um, and I wanted to make that as easy as possible, so it's a benefit to you guys too. Um, now I'm off my memories again. So let's, uh, let's see. I don't think I can do this. No. Um, sorry about the delay.